Hi everybody, this is Julian from AWS. In this video, I want to take you through an end-to-end -end demo of using Keras with Amazon SageMaker. And I will use some of the latest features that were announced at uh, Amazon reInvent, like uh, SageMaker Model Debugger, SageMaker Model Monitor, and, and a few more things. Okay, let's get started. Uh, the first step would be to grab the code for this, and uh, it's on uh, GitLab, so just grab it from this repo here, okay? Just grab the clone URL, open a terminal, and just clone the repo, okay? And here I'm using a notebook instance, okay? So of course I will done, I've done it before. Here I'm using a notebook instance, I already cloned the repo. Okay, and then you can just go into that directory and open the notebook. The first step will be, of course, to make sure we have the latest SDKs, especially the latest SageMaker SDK. And as we're going to use uh, SageMaker model debugger, we also need to have SM debug and SM debug rules config. Okay, then uh, we just wanna restart the kernel to make sure all those new packages are taken into account and then we can import the SageMaker SDK and get to work. Now, the purpose of this Keras script is to train um, a convolutional neural network, a CNN, um, to classify images on the Fashion MNIST dataset. Okay, so here's an example of Fashion MNIST. 10 classes, 60,000 samples, etc. You're probably familiar with it by now. Uh, the first thing is, of course, to download the dataset and uh, Keras uh, provides a built-in API for that. Okay, I save the training set, the validation set in a local directory. And then we could take a look at our Keras code. It's vanilla Keras code. What I'm doing here is grabbing hyperparameters from the command line, which is important for script mode. I'll get back to that in a few minutes and also grabbing environment variables that SageMaker will pass to this code in order to define the location of the training set, the validation set, where to save the model, and how many GPUs are on this machine. Okay, so again, this is tied to script mode. I have another detailed video on script mode, which I will uh, highlight in the video description. Okay, and then um, just extracting those parameters, loading the data set, um, doing very basic uh, processing here, normalizing pixel values, making sure pixel values are between 0 and 1, uh, one hot encoding the class uh, identifiers, and then building my convolution neural network and compiling it using the SGD optimizer and then training, evaluating and saving the model in TensorFlow serving format, okay, which is what SageMaker uses to deploy models. Okay, so nothing really strange here, nothing really uh, extraordinary. The only important bit, again, is script mode, okay? So we could try running this script on the local machine, and here I really mean local. So for me, it's gonna mean running it on the notebook instance, but it, it's exactly like running it on your laptop, right? So training for one epoch and making sure that this code runs. Okay, so I can see the model being built and I see that I'm training for one epoch and we don't care so much about accuracy here. The point is we just wanna see that this code works, okay? Then the next step would be train in local mode using the TensorFlow container. So the difference is we're still going to run on the local machine. So here again, on my notebook instance, or it could be your laptop, but I'm going to use the TensorFlow container. So SageMaker is going to pull the TensorFlow container to the local machine. It's going to load the Keras script inside of it, and it's going to train there. So this is interesting because it's uh, gonna show me whether this code runs fine inside the TensorFlow container. So it's the next step in uh, validating that your code works, okay, without having to train on managed infrastructure, which 
you know, takes a few minutes to come up and of course uh, induces costs. Okay, here there is no cost. You are training on your local machine and you are training on local data. So you don't need S3 either. Okay, so just call fit on this and I can see I'm training for one epoch again because it's really just for validation. And I can see my code being invoked, okay, inside the container. Okay, so this is why it's called script mode because it is run like a normal script, okay? And again, see the model being built and I see one epoch of training, okay? So that's good. This shows that this code runs fine inside the TensorFlow container. Now, the next step, of course, is to train on managed infrastructure. So now this time I will upload the training set and the validation set to S3. And I'm going to set up my training job. Uh, and it's pretty much the same TensorFlow estimator as before. Uh, the difference is now I'm using a proper instance type. Okay, instead of that uh, local mode training, I'm using a GPU instance here. In fact, I'm even using a spot instance, okay, because I, I you know, I want to uh, get a nice discount. We'll see how much we get. And I'm also setting up model debugging, okay, using SageMaker model debugger. So what this does is you specify a list of rules that you want um, your training job to be checked against. Okay, so here, for example, I want to check for loss not decreasing and overfitting. Okay, and there are more rules. You can find them in documentation and you can also add your own rules if you want. So what happens when we start training? We see the training job um, firing up. Okay, and in parallel, we also see debugging jobs firing up. Okay, so for each of the rules that we configure here, SageMaker is going to create a debugging job. And the way this works is the training job automatically saves information in S3. Okay, and it's going to save information on tensors. So uh, things like metrics, um, information for each layer in the neural networks, etc. That stuff gets saved to S3 and it's inspected on the fly by the debugging rules and the debugging jobs. So if, for example, the loss tensor that is uh, inspected by this rule shows that loss is not decreasing, then this rule will be triggered, the debugging job will stop, and you will know something was not right. And the training job will get stopped as well because there's no point in going on if your training job uh, has a problem, okay? So that's the, that's the high level ID here. We can of course describe what's going on and we can look at the debugging uh, rules and we see that loss, the loss not decreasing job has been stopped, which means that uh, the rule was actually triggered. And we can see, uh, again, the overfit rule has been triggered and the job has been, has been stopped. So actually both my debugging rules have been, uh, have been triggered, okay? So I didn't mean to do that, but I guess, you know, it happened this time. So now I want to know what's going on. So I can look at the output information for that training job. Okay. And I can list it and I can see, you know, there's quite a bit of stuff here, right? So lots of tensor information being saved by my uh, training job. And now I can use the uh, SageMaker debugger SDK to create a trial from that data and start inspecting it. Okay, so just pass the location of the information saved in S3. And we can see we have a trial. We, we see the different steps, uh, which are really the, the TensorFlow steps. Okay, and we can see the collections of tensors that have been saved and we can see tensor names. All right, so here um, I configured nothing right in my Keras code. So I'm just using default tensor collections, etc. But of course, you can configure that stuff and you could decide to save only gradients or only metrics if you want to. Okay, so I can see tensor names and let's take a look at the loss. 
and I can print out lost values. All right, so I'm not sure which uh, specific step was actually a problem. We would need to zoom in a little bit on this data to figure it out. But uh, you know, maybe you know, maybe this one here was a problem. You know, we can see loss bumped up a little bit here as well, right? So maybe that's not good. Maybe this was enough to trigger the loss not decreasing rule. Of course, you have to understand the model. You have to understand the different layers, etc., to figure out what's going on here. But still, you know, it's pointing you at specific problems that happened during the training job, and um, and you can again drill down and try to understand what went wrong and how to fix it. Okay, uh, sure, we could deploy this to a real-time endpoint, but let's not do that for now. Let's just run automatic model tuning because after all we just trained once so we don't know that this model is a really high quality one um, automatic model tuning is just a simple way to explore hyperparameter ranges so I'm defining ranges for my uh, parameters here epochs learning rate etc so I would say machine learning parameters but also uh, architectural parameters like how many convolutional filters do I want uh, what's the size of the dance layer, etc. So you can do architecture search as well, not just uh, tuning the learning rate or the batch size. Okay, the next step is to define which metric you want to optimize on. So here I'm going to use validation accuracy, which I want to maximize. But I can also grab other metrics. In fact, anything that gets logged to the training log can be used as a, a model tuning metric okay so if i wanted to use uh, the validation f1 score i would just use this name here and um, SageMaker would use this regular expression to extract a val f1 score from the training log okay so again anything that gets logged can be used as a metric this is a question i get a lot so this is how to do it all right, uh, next is uh, the TensorFlow estimator, which is the usual one, okay? Script, train on a GPU instance, uh, use script mode, and use spot instances to save money, and then put everything together and define a tuning job for that estimator with that metric, those hyperparameters, etc. And I'm gonna train 20 jobs two by two, right? So I'm gonna fire up two, get some results, then SageMaker applies machine learning optimization to define what's the next set of hyperparameters to try, and it's gonna fire up uh, two more jobs, etc., etc. okay? So you can run all of them sequentially, uh, which is probably the best way, but if you wanna save time, you can parallelize things a bit, and uh, just don't parallelize too much because you will have fewer opportunities to, uh, to optimize, okay? And then just launch the tuning job, and this is gonna run for a while. And while it's running, okay, just like we've seen for SageMaker Autopilot, we can automatically use SageMaker experiments to see what's going on, okay? So there's nothing to configure here. I didn't put any code in my Kera script. This is done automatically. And I can export the tuning jobs to a pandas data frame, and I can view all the data for that, right? Uh, the hyperparameters that have been tried, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? And once the tuning job is over, then I can grab the best job, okay? And here's its name. Um, the top validation accuracy was a little more than 92%. And I can describe it, right? Using all those APIs. And of course, now we want to deploy it. Okay, so the first step uh, is uh, because I want to use model monitor to capture data, is to define the location where I want to capture data. And by default here, I'm just enabling capture with a location, which means I'm going to capture inputs, so data sent to the endpoint, outputs, predictions, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna capture 100%, okay? So this is configurable. Uh, as I've showed you in the in the video for uh, XJBoost, here I'm just using defaults and capturing everything, okay? And then I'm just deploying the job, and uh, this time I'm using the SageMaker SDK to do it. 
all right? So I'm not messing with uh, endpoint configurations or etc. cetera. I'm, I'm using the high level API. And again, business as usual, just pass the data capture configuration. So after a few minutes, the model is up and I can predict with it. So just grab uh, 10 random images from the validation set, send them to the endpoint using the predict API in the SDK, which is really HTTPS posting to the endpoint. And I can see some results. So uh, comparing uh, real labels with predicted labels. So 6116. Okay, so this one's wrong. Uh, 45309. Okay, so we have a mistake on uh, yeah this one. Okay, class 8 versus class 7. Okay, fair enough. So let's keep sending some traffic to this because I want to make sure data is captured. And um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take 250 samples from the validation set at a time in a single, in a single uh, request, send them to the endpoint for predictions and store all the predicted labels. Okay, so I'm just piling up um, real labels and predicted labels over the full validation data set. Okay. So iterating 250 by 250 takes about 30 seconds. And then I can build a confusion matrix, right? And by the way, this is really generic code if you want to use it. Uh, just uh, pass your labels and predicted labels and it should work. So I see my confusion matrix. So ideally this would be, uh, you know, maximum values on the diagonal and, uh, and zeros everywhere else, but life isn't perfect. So for example, I see I'm doing really well on class one. Okay, so there are really, really very few mistakes. Class one, I'm doing really well on class eight, right? Very few mistakes, but I see class six is a troublemaker. And specifically, I have a lot of mismatches between class six and class zero. Okay, so we would have to look at the class six samples and class zero samples and try to understand why they get misclassified and maybe either you know add more samples or uh, add more feature extraction capabilities to the script so that it can sort out those problems okay but here this is not a really good result okay and um, in the process of course i send a whole bunch of data to the endpoint and it's been captured and I can see JSON line files in S3, which I can copy locally. And then I can open one of those files and I see uh, JSON data, right? Input data. So that means this is a data sample sent to the endpoint. And then I can see the data here. And these are basically the pixel values, okay? Normalized pixel values between zero and one sent to the endpoint. So there's a whole bunch of them. And somewhere below, there would be something that says, let's see if I can catch it. Uh, there would be something that says output. <laughs> no, I can't seem to find it. Okay, we would need to look at the file properly. Um, we would see something that says output with the predicted class, okay? So this is how you capture data. And again, then uh, the next step would be to train um, a baseline using the training set and compare this uh, real time data, this incoming data to the baseline and check for data quality problems like missing features or data drift, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. We have examples of uh, on how to do that and I will link the notebook in the video description. And once you're done, don't forget to delete the endpoint to stop paying for it. So there you go. Uh, here's a, a pretty complete uh, TensorFlow Keras demo on SageMaker showing you how to train with local mode, how to train on managed infrastructure, how to do hyperparameter tuning, how to use model debugger, and how to use model monitor. Okay, so pretty, pretty extensive. So that's the end of this video. I hope it was informative. If you have comments and questions, please ask them. So that's the end of this video. I hope it was informative. Happy to answer any question that you may have. And don't forget to subscribe to be notified of future videos. Until next time, bye-bye.